Today in the news, we got a whole lot of Intel and an upgrade for some of the oldest AM4 motherboards. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. Alder Lake was officially released about a week and a half ago, on November 4th. You might think that the release schedule of that generation was a little bit rushed. I mean, the 11th generation Rocket Lake CPUs came out on the 30th of March of this year. That's seven months and about a week between the two. So yeah, that was fast. But honestly, if you look at the past five to six generations from Intel, there is zero consistency when it comes to release dates. And it looks like it's still going to be inconsistent. According to HXL over on Twitter, Raptor Lake, which is the 13th generation, would release a little earlier than we thought. It looks like it's coming in Q3 instead. Just to refresh you real quick, Raptor Lake, which is the name of the 13th generation, will likely keep the same setup for its performance cores with up to eight of them. But it would greatly increase the number of efficient cores. The top of the line CPUs are expected to have eight big cores and 16 little cores for a total of 32 threads. And I'm not surprised that they chose to increase the number of E cores. I mean, four of them equal about 1.3 performance cores, and they take up about the same amount of space on the die. So I personally wouldn't mind a version with 6P cores and 24E cores. For productivity, that thing would kick ass. For clock dependent workloads though, it's not gonna be that great. Oh, and you might think that adding cores here is a bad idea. I mean, the 12900K is already a furnace and it has less cores. So all things point to higher power consumption if they add an extra eight E cores, right? Well, according to recent leaks, Raptor Lake would use a digital line voltage regulator or DLVR, which could help reduce the power consumption by 25%. So that's going to be interesting. If the 12900K had that DLVR thing, then it would consume 180 watts at full load instead of the 241. That's a pretty big difference. Also, in Intel news, we obviously have the unlocked K-series SKUs out and about, and you can buy one right now. But if you want a non-K version, well, you're gonna have to wait. Or not, because currently there are some 12400s already for sale on eBay for around $230 US. But there's a couple of catches. A, they're engineering samples. B, they're not really close to the rumored specs for a 12400, and C, well, it might just not work. If you've seen Linus's video about the engineering sample that he bought of a 12900K, well, you know that it didn't end well. He wasn't able to use it at all. And lastly for Intel, we got some news about the 14th generation of CPUs. Yep, we're going that far out. So the 14th gen is Meteor Lake, and it was often described as a successor to Raptor Lake. It would be a chiplet-based CPU that could have a die for the GPU, one for the CPU, and of course an IO die. There would also be some stacked elements since Meteor Lake uses Fulveros technology. Those are apparently mobile-only chips. According to Greymon55 over on Twitter, Meteor Lake will be mobile-only, and Arrow Lake would be the name of the desktop chip. Arrow Lake, by the way, is what Intel is readying to show Apple that they still got it. Remember, Pat Gelsinger said that he wanted Apple's business back. Arrow Lake would be based on the Intel 4 process node, and the top of the line desktop SKU would have 40 cores and 48 threads. That's still eight performance cores only and 32 E cores. I guess Intel kind of knows what I want. Moving on, let's talk about ASUS and Gigabyte. In a quite weird move that AMD will certainly not approve of, both companies released BIOSes for some motherboards to make them support Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Now, why did I call it a weird move? Well, the motherboard chipset compatible with these updates are A320 boards. What the hell? I mean, people who bought B350, aka me, or X370 boards must be so pissed at this right now. I mean, I am. B350 and X570 are just not compatible with Ryzen 5000 unless you flash your BIOS to a higher end motherboard, which can be dangerous. It could break your board. Now, if you have an A320 board from ASUS or Gigabyte and consider getting a 5000 series CPU, just note that A, Bristol Ridge CPUs will not be compatible anymore, and 
5000B, Ryzen 5000G APUs won't work. Trust me, I tried. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.